In this review, we're gonna take a deep dive into the health and sports tracking performance of the new Samsung Galaxy Watch 6 Classic by systematically and scientifically evaluating its performance. Now, the Samsung Galaxy Watch 6 Classic is Samsung's most premium smartwatch in the latest generation, and today we're gonna to find out if it lives up to its price tag. And I have to say, even compared to my previous testing, there were a few surprises. Now, in this video, we'll be testing the heart rate tracking during exercise, the sleep stage tracking, the GPS or location tracking, and the oxygen saturation measurements. Let's get started. Hello everyone, for those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist specializing in biological data analysis. Now, in a recent video, I already did some first tests with the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic and the Galaxy Watch 6. However, I've now had the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic for over a week and I've collected a lot more test data. Now, as always, I'm not going to bother you by listing the specs of this watch as you can find those on Samsung's website. Instead, we're going to purely be focusing on independent testing of the performance of this watch. Now, I bought the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic with my own money and this video is in no way sponsored, so you can be assured that you are getting a completely independent review. Now let's start off by looking at the heart rate tracking performance of the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic, which I tested during a total of 6 indoor cycling workouts, 13 outdoor cycling workouts and 6 weightlifting sessions. And as always, we'll start by looking at one of the easiest exercises for a watch to track your heart rate, namely cycling indoors. And here you can see an overview of that accuracy. Now we'll be checking the performance of the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic by comparing it against the Polar H10 ECG chest strap, which can generally record my heart rate very accurately. Now along the horizontal axis here, we have my heart rate according to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap. And on the vertical axis is my heart rate according to the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic. Each dot is a matching measurement between the Polar H10 and the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic. And we want the points to be as close to the blue line as possible. So the better the agreement, the more points there are close to this blue line. Now the more dots that there are, the darker black the color. And as you can see along the blue line, there's a lot of black, so that's good. And the correlation, this R value up here is also pretty okay at 0.92. Now this correlation value cannot be higher than one. So a total correlation of 0.92 isn't that bad. But we do see some deviations away from the blue line. So there are some points above it, but also some points below it. Now, if they're above it, it means it detected a too high heart rate. And if they're below it, it means it detected a too low heart rate. And it's important to mention that these results are based on six separate indoor cycling sessions. So they should provide a pretty good overview of the performance. But let's take a look at some of the individual training sessions, because these can tell us what went wrong when it measured a too high or a too low heart rate. And here we have the first spinning session I wanted to show you. With in blue green my heart rate according to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap, and in red my heart rate according to the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic. With the clock time along the horizontal axis and my heart rate on the vertical axis. Now we want the lines to overlap as much as possible, and as you can see the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic is doing a pretty good job. So generally it follows along quite nicely with the Polar H10, though there are a few moments where you see significant deviations. I would say the biggest one is right here where it failed to pick up on this dip in my heart rate, but also right here and right here it doesn't show a delay in picking up on that decrease in my heart rate. So again, it seems to struggle with changes in my heart rate, but let's take a look at some other sessions as well. Now here we have this second spinning session, and here in the middle we see something weirds going on. Now, I'm not sure what's happening. It seems to have lost the signal here sometimes for a bit, as you can see right here, for instance. But then also when it is recording my heart rate, it was pretty wrong. So it detected a too high heart rate in this case. But again, it's a similar problem where it cannot detect this dip in my heart rate fully. And we also see some more subtle cases where it also had trouble detecting changes in my heart rate. You can see one right here, for instance, but also here there's a slight delay. Still overall, it's not that bad, honestly. And there were also some sessions where I did really well, like this one right here, for instance. Here I would say it's almost spot on. And for this final example, I wanted to show you there were some more issues. We see here that several times that I had a dip in my heart rate, it actually detected some increase in my heart rate and then missed the signal for a while. So we see here it had a dip, then it went up for a bit and then there was a lack of signal, so no dots right here. And we see something similar right here. So it could detect the initial decrease in my heart rate for a little bit and then all of a sudden my heart rate shoots up to 180 BPM, where in reality it went down to about half of that, so about 90 BPM. So this is actually a moment where I detected double the heart rate it should have and that's also probably what's going on right here. So generally it seems to do pretty okay, but there's a few artifacts in there. So you need to decide for yourself if this is an issue for you. 
So honestly, that looks pretty decent so far. However, to get a better feeling for the performance of the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic, let's put these results into perspective by comparing them to 65 other watches I tested in the past. That way you can see if there might be a better option out there for you. And here we have an overview of the performance of different watches where we can compare the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic to other watches I've tested in the past. Now along the horizontal axis we have the correlation value I was talking about before and we want that value to be as close to 1 as possible. And on the vertical axis I ordered the watches from worst to best. So the further to the right and the higher device is the better is its performance. And here I marked the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic in red and as you can see it's sort of in the upper middle class of watches I would say. There's definitely a lot of watches out there that are doing worse but there's also better performers out there. But let's zoom in a bit so we can actually read the labels and see how it compares to the watches closest to it. So this is a zoomed in version of the plot we had before with just the watches of a correlation of 0.9 or higher. So this is the best performing watches. And as you can see the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic is amongst those sort of better watches out there. But there's definitely a bunch of devices out there that are doing better. So we see it's close in performance at least on me to the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro, so the previous generation. But as we also saw in my previous video, the Galaxy Watch 5 and Galaxy Watch 4 that I retested both seem to be doing quite a bit better than the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic. And I'm not sure what's going on here, if this is a real performance difference or if there's something in the circumstances that made the Galaxy Watch 5 and 4 just perform a bit better on those days that I tested them. I do really try to standardize my testing, but I don't have enough wrists on my body to test all watches each time again. So we just have to deal with these data. So it could be that for some reason, be it size, shape or weight, that the 6 Classic and also the 5 Pro are doing worse than the Galaxy Watch 4 and 5. But I have to say a correlation of 0.92 is not bad at all and might be good enough for most people that just want to track their rough heart rate during cycling indoors. There might be a few moments where it shows some artifacts but overall it's actually quite okay. But as I've mentioned before, Apple watches and also some selected Huawei watches seem to be doing significantly better than basically all watches out there. And this includes Galaxy watches like the Galaxy Watch X Classic. Let's now move on to one of the more difficult exercises for a watch to track, outdoor cycling. Now cycling outdoors is generally more difficult for a watch to track because of the increased tension on my arms and also because of the increased bumpiness. Let's find out if this affected the performance of the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic. And here we have a similar overview plot to before but now for cycling outside and as you can see this honestly looks a lot worse than before. So again we want the points to be as close to the blue line as possible but we see quite some points below and also above the blue line so generally the cloud of points is pretty spread out. Now there are still quite a few points here close to the blue line but it's much worse compared to what we saw for cycling indoors. And we also see that the correlation, this R value up here is significantly lower now at 0.7. So this is a lot lower than the 0.92 we saw for indoor cycling. Now this makes sense, we've seen this for other watches as well and we even see one moment right here where it's close to the red line. Now this means that in this moment it detected half the actual heart rate. Now this happens sometimes with watches where they have a noisy signal and they cannot determine if it's the actual heart rate or half of it. And just some background here, these results are based on a total of 13 bike rides so there's quite some data here and I'm pretty sure that the results we get here are not just a deviation in a single ride. But again let's take a look at the individual training sessions to see what's going on here. And here we have the first bike ride I wanted to share with you and I thought this one was particularly interesting because we see I had three major peaks in my heart rate and each time it showed a significant delay in picking up that increase in my heart rate. So this is somewhat similar to what we saw for cycling indoors but I would say this looks even worse. But it's not as clear cut for some of the other cycling sessions and one example of those is displayed right here. So again we want the red line to be as close to the blue line as possible but there's quite some deviations and to me the main problem the problem appears to be that the 6 Classic cannot detect sudden changes in my heart rate. So I had a lot of peaks and dips in my heart rate, but the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic sort of follows along with the general pattern, but not those details. And it also has some delay in picking up those changes. So again, here I had a pretty fast increase in my heart rate, but the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic just lags a bit behind that. So overall, you get some impression of what your heart rate might have been, but you're definitely lacking those details. Or at least that's how it performs on me. And I would say we see more or less the same thing for all bike rides. Again, the general patterns are followed, but a lot of those peaks and dips in my heart rate are just not detected by the Galaxy Watch. And there's some delay in it picking up on those changes. Now again, this is a similar overview to what we were looking at before. Also in this overview, the further to the right and the higher devices, the better is its performance. And as you can see, the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic marked in red right here is doing 
okay. It's in the middle of all the watches. It's doing about the same as some Fitbits and some Garmin watches, but I would say it isn't good enough for use during cycling, at least not on me. There are some watches which are doing a bit better, like the Whoop Strap, for instance, and the Huawei Band 7. And there are some watches that are doing really a lot better, like some Huawei watches, and especially, again, the Apple watches. I'm sorry to say it for those of you who don't like Apple, but Apple really figured out how to do good heart rate tracking. And looking at the other Galaxy watches, we again see that the Galaxy Watch 5 and Galaxy Watch 4 did a little bit better on me than the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic, though all of them are not quite good enough to track your heart rate for cycling outside. I would want a correlation of at least 0.9 and preferably, if possible, even 0.95 to get accurate heart rate tracking. Next, let's take a look at another difficult exercise for a watch to track, weightlifting. Now for weightlifting, it's not the movement per se that makes it hard to track your heart rate, but this exercise is more difficult because of the increased tension on my wrist and on my arm, making it much harder for a watch to get a clean heart rate signal. However, first a quick side note, if you're interested in the latest updates on the wearables I'm testing, I'm planning to start back up with my newsletter and posting more off the cuff things on my Instagram and my YouTube Shorts channel. So if you're interested in any of those, those are linked below. Of course, you would also make me really happy and it would help my efforts if you subscribe to this YouTube channel. But of course, this is totally up to you. Now, enough self-promotion. Let's take a look at the performance during weightlifting, which I tested during a total of six training sessions. And again, here we have a similar plot to before, but now for weightlifting. And again, we want those measurements to be as close to the blue line as possible. And as you can see, this looks a tiny bit better compared to what we saw for cycling indoors. But still, the correlation is quite low at 0.74, and there's quite some points away from the blue line. But for weightlifting, it's actually especially important to look at the individual weightlifting sessions to see what's going on. And here we have the first weightlifting session I wanted to share with you, with again in blue the Polar H10 reference and the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic in red. So for the first two thirds or so of the training, I did mostly leg exercises and there the watch actually did pretty okay. So it was able to pick up on each of the peaks in my heart rate. So each peak is a set of an exercise and that it was able to follow. But then the moment I switched to doing back exercises, it really started to struggle. So this is a first hint to me that it might be good enough if you're training legs, but not if you're training your upper body. But let's take a look at some of the upper body exercises to see how it's doing. Now in this training session right here, I was mostly focusing on chest and triceps. So I was doing a lot of bench presses and dips. And as you can see, the Galaxy Watch does seem to struggle a bit. So here I was doing some bench presses and it somehow detected quite a high heart rate, where in reality I was doing three different sets right here. Then this set it sort of detected, and the same is true for this one right here, but also right here it detected a too high heart rate. Whereas here later in the training, it picked up on some of the peaks when I was doing dips, but here again, it struggled and it actually detected a too low heart rate. And for this third training session where I was doing back and biceps, you can see it was also struggling quite a lot. So here in the beginning, it was detecting a way too high heart rate quite often, whereas later in the training, it was detecting a too low heart rate. So we can now see where those problems came from in the overview, where it sometimes detects a too high heart rate and sometimes a too low heart rate. So my impression based on these results is that at least on me, the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic is not good enough to use for weightlifting. And we can see how good it actually is if we compare it to all of the other watches out there. And those results are displayed right here. So here the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic is marked in red. And as you can see, the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic is somewhere in the middle of all watches. It's not doing terrible, but also not great. But we can generally see that most watches are not doing that well for weightlifting. There's only a few watches with a correlation of 0.9 or higher, and only four or five with a correlation of 0.95 or higher. So this shows you that weightlifting is a really difficult exercise for a watch to track your heart rate. Now generally I would only use a watch with a correlation of 0.9 or 0.95 or higher to track your heart rate. So even though the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic isn't doing great here, this is true for most watches out there and I would recommend just getting an ECG chest strap to get accurate heart rate measurements during weightlifting. And there's one more important remark to make. So the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic is actually not doing that bad compared to the other Galaxy Watches. So here we have the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro, but the Galaxy Watch 4 and 5 are actually a bit lower in this case. So here we have the Galaxy Watch 4, which is really not doing that well. And the same is true for the Galaxy Watch 5. But as I said, most watches, including all Galaxy Watches, are in my opinion, not good enough to use during weightlifting. So overall, the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic is not a terrible heart rate tracker, but it also isn't amazing. For cycling indoors, it is likely good enough for most people. However, for cycling outside, I expect many people might be disappointed with its performance. Now for weightlifting, it also didn't do that well, but this was to be expected given that most watches are not that good at weightlifting. 
Therefore, overall, I give the heart rate tracking three out of five stars since it's quite okay, but only during more static exercises. Next, let's explore a different health monitoring feature, sleep stage tracking. Now, while this is quite different from tracking your heart rate, there's an argument to be made that sleep could potentially be more important for your well-being than regular exercise. Now, Samsung has put a lot of emphasis on sleep tracking with the Galaxy Watch 6 and Galaxy Watch 6 Classic. However, as I mentioned in my previous video, I expect that they mostly improved the data presentation and not the actual sleep stage tracking itself. And this could be an issue, honestly, since if their sleep recommendations to people rely on faulty data, those recommendations might not be worth much. So let's take a look. To check if the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic can detect my sleep stages, I'll compare it to an EEG device called the Dream 2 that can actually measure my brain waves and has been shown to be pretty accurate for sleep stage tracking. And here I show an overview of the sleep test results, with my sleep stage according to the Dream 2 on top and the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic on the left. Now to get an overall impression of how well the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic can track my sleep stages, the Dream 2 EEG headband should be good enough. However, the gold standard would be polysomnography, which I actually also already used on the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic, but I'm still waiting for the results to be analyzed. So I'll share those results once I have them, but that's just for a single night, whereas these results are based on four nights. Now each column here sums to 100%, meaning that we can see what percentage of each of the sleep stages according to the Dream 2 was predicted as each sleep stage by the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic. So that means that if there's perfect agreement, all values on the diagonal should be 100%. Now first of all, we see that only 34% of what was deep sleep according to the EEG headband was also predicted as deep sleep by the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic, so that's pretty bad honestly. More of it was actually predicted as being light sleep instead at about 55%. So that isn't looking too good, but let's take a look at some of the individual nights to see what's going on. And here we have the first night I wanted to share with you, with on top the sleep stages according to the Dream 2 EEG headband, with the clock time along the horizontal axis and the sleep stages on the vertical axis. And on the bottom we have a similar plot, but now for the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic, with the deep sleep as recorded by the EEG device marked in purple. Now, as you can see, some of the deep sleep that was recorded by the EEG device was also detected by the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic, but in general, the 6 Classic detected very little deep sleep, so it only detected half of this first deep sleep segment of the EEG device, and then later it only detected two very small deep sleep segments. So generally for this night, the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic detected very little deep sleep, and some of the deep sleep detected by the EEG device was detected as either being REM sleep or light sleep instead. Now for this second night, it detected a little bit more deep sleep, but again, the first deep sleep segment of the EEG device was only half detected by the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic and later in the night it detected some other random deep sleep which didn't match with the EEG device. And again, this part of the deep sleep detected by the EEG device was detected as being REM sleep and light sleep. And this is the general pattern I see for my Galaxy Watch 6 Classic where it just tends to detect very little deep sleep and the deep sleep that it does detect only partially overlaps with the EEG device. Now during this night I subjectively also felt I had a light night of sleep and as you can see I had a few awake moments as well. But the Galaxy Watch 6 detects almost no deep sleep and also a lot of extra awake moments but we'll get to that in a second. Now light sleep agreement is at best okay I would say, so only 60% of what the EEG device said was light sleep was also detected as light sleep by the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic. A lot of it was actually also detected as being either REM sleep or awake time. Now REM sleep detection on the other hand is really bad at about 29% agreement with the EEG device. So that means that only 29% of what the EEG device detected as being REM sleep was also classified as REM sleep by the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic. Most of it, about two thirds, was actually predicted as being light sleep instead. So in most cases when the EEG device said, okay, now you're in REM sleep, the Galaxy Watch 6 said instead, no, you're in light sleep actually. So that's not so good. But let's take a quick look at the individual nights. Now this is a similar overview to before, but now with the REM sleep as detected by the EEG device marked in red. And as you can see, there isn't a great match between the EEG device and the 6 Classic. There is some overlap, so this first REM sleep segment was partially detected by the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic, but then here it detected a very long awake moment where likely I was only awake for a little bit and I also had some REM sleep. And then again here during some of the REM sleep that the EEG device detected, the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic said I was awake for quite a bit of that time. So generally we do not see a very good agreement for this night. And I would say that's more or less also true for this night. There's some agreement between the EEG device and the 6 Classic, but only partially. So this REM sleep segment matches roughly with the EEG device. 
And the same is true for this segment right here and maybe even for this segment right here. But overall, looking at all the nights, it doesn't look very good. Now, awake time detection was okay at best as well, with about 60% of the awake moments detected by the EEG device also being detected as awake moments by the Galaxy Watch 6. But a significant fraction was also detected as either REM sleep or light sleep. And what we should also remember from before that quite often when I was in light sleep according to the EEG device, the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic detected awake time instead. So in general, the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic seems to be detecting a lot of awake time. We see that a bit for this night right here, where I marked the EEG detected awake moments in green. And as you can see, the EEG device only detected one significant awake moment, which actually wasn't detected by the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic. But the 6 Classic did detect a number of extra awake moments, as you can see right here, 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 but also here. So it had a lot of these short awake moments. But as we saw before for this night right here, where I was sleeping quite light, so I had some awake moments as the EEG device also detected. But the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic detected a lot of awake time for this night maybe one third of the night was awake time according to the six classic and this just isn't realistic you can see a really long awake moment right here but there's also several more right here and right here and they don't even match that well with the eeg device and especially this awake moment right here is just very unlikely so my general impression is that the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic, at least the one I own, is very sensitive so it tends to detect little deep sleep and a lot of light sleep and awake moments so honestly, that doesn't look too great. However, let's put this into perspective by comparing the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic to many of the other devices I tested in the past. Now, this graph shows you an overview of the agreement of different watches with the EG device. With along the horizontal axis, the average agreement over the four individual sleep stages. And on the vertical axis, we have the agreement of the worst sleep stage. That means that the better the agreement, the more the top right the device is. Now the watches marked in blue right here were actually tested against a polysonography device, which is the gold standard of sleep stage tracking. And those not marked in blue were based on the EEG device. And as you can see, the results based on the EEG device and those based on the PSG device generally give similar results. Now the devices with the best agreement so far are different Apple Watches, in this case the Apple Watch Series 7, Series 8, the Apple Watch SE and the Apple Watch Ultra. The HSLEEP Pod 3 also did really well in my testing and other good devices include different Fitbits, Whoop straps and the Withing Sleep Analyzer, though their agreement is not quite as good as that of the Apple Watches. And if we now plot the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic in the same plot, we see it isn't doing that well. And we can see it's not too far away from the other Galaxy Watches. So the Galaxy Watch 5, the Galaxy Watch 4 Classic, the Galaxy Watch 4 and the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro. So I think all of them likely have the same or a similar sleep stage tracking algorithm. And even though Samsung did announce that they would focus more on sleep tracking, I don't think that the sleep stage tracking has improved any. It's probably still the same algorithm as they were using before, but they probably improved the data presentation more, so the way they're communicating it to you. But just looking at the data, I don't see a clear improvement in the Samsung Galaxy Watch 6 Classic compared to the previous generations. So this generally seems to be in line with what I expected, namely that the sleep stage tracking of the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic just isn't that good. Therefore, overall, I'd give the sleep stage tracking two to maybe two and a half out of five stars. Next, let's take a look at a feature that might be able to detect an underlying medical condition you might not even know you had. I'm referring to the oxygen saturation or SpO2 measurements of the Galaxy Watch. Now you can get a low oxygen saturation, for instance, when you have sleep apnea, which is a condition where you stop breathing for a while during the night. And oxygen saturation measurements, or in other words, SpO2 measurements like those the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic takes might be able to detect this. Now where heart rate is usually recorded using green light, red and infrared light are generally used to track oxygen saturation. And I wanted to find out if the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic can detect a lowered oxygen saturation. Now to test that, I took the watch with me on an airplane flight. In the plane, the air pressure in the cabin is decreased during the flight, which effectively lowers the oxygen concentration, which then in turn lowers the oxygen content of my red blood cells. Now in pink here, I plotted how my oxygen saturation changed during the flight according to a reference device. Now this reference device I have isn't perfect. It's a ring you put on your finger. And when you move your finger a lot, it's not super accurate, but it should be reliable enough to see the patterns in my oxygen saturation. So you have the clock time along the horizontal axis and my oxygen saturation on the vertical axis. So you can exactly see when the plane was still on the ground when my oxygen saturation was relatively normal. Then as the plane ascended, my oxygen saturation decreased 
it more or less stayed low during the flights and these peaks are probably because I was moving my finger and typing on my keyboard. And as the plane descended again, my oxygen saturation went back to normal levels. And what we hope is that the measurements with the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic match the same patterns. And those results are displayed here in green. So each individual measurement I took with the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic is a green dot right here. And as you can see, the overall patterns somewhat match with the reference device. So we have more or less normal values before takeoff, though there are already two lower measurements here then as the plane ascended the values did decrease quite significantly and then as it ascended again the values became a bit higher again now it's not perfect but the lowest measurements were indeed taken in the air so all the measurements here in mid-flight were indeed the lowest measurements so lower than the ones before takeoff and after landing and even lower than the measurements taken while we were ascending and descending so it isn't extremely reliable so there is quite a bit of variation going on right here but i do think if you're consistently getting very low measurements with the galaxy watch 6 you might want to check out if there's something wrong. But again, it's not a medical device, so no need to immediately panic. So this actually doesn't look too bad. Now this was still a very preliminary test, but the results look promising that there is some noise in the data. Therefore, I would give the oxygen saturation measurements of the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic three and a half out of five stars. Next, let's take a look at a feature of the Galaxy Watch that will be used by many people, namely the GPS or location tracking. The way we will test the location tracking is by cycling the same route several times and checking if the signals overlap, which would be good, or if instead there's actually a big divergence between the recorded signals, which would be bad. And here we can see the results for four times I cycled to work and I always start my workout right on the corner right here. So this green marker here is exactly on the right spot, but the three others are a bit spread out. So the green markers are the first moment it got a GPS signal. And as you can see, that first signal is a bit noisy, but it did find the signal really quickly. So I didn't give it any extra time to acquire the signal. But what we hope to see later on is that there's a very good consistency between the four tracks. So I cycled the same route four times and if the tracking is very accurate, they should overlap very well. So if we zoom out a bit, we can see that a bit better. And overall, the consistency is okay, I would say, though there is quite a bit of noise still between the signals. Especially here, we see that the signals are deviating quite a bit more than I would hope. Still, it's not terrible but i do think there is a bit of deviation in the signal sometimes you can also see that here where this route right here is deviating a bit from the others and also here it's not as consistent as some of the other watches are sometimes it's not terrible it's definitely not amongst the worst watches but it's mediocre or maybe in the upper middle class of watches you can see some deviation right here and also here this part of the ride is more often difficult for watches and you can see that the galaxy watch 6 classic also struggles here so for instance right here we can see it actually tracked my route on the opposite side of the street but overall it's not terrible. But let's also take a look at three more rides I cycled back from work and see if those signals are a bit more consistent than this. And those three tracks are displayed right here. Again, the signals are acquired pretty quickly, so that's a really good part. But then looking at the signals themselves, there is a bit of noise going on. It's not terrible. This is looking better than what we saw for when I was cycling to work, but still overall, they're not amongst the top performers out there for instance Garmin and even Apple is a bit better though Garmin is actually the top performer I had so far here we see a bit more deviation but this is again generally a place where a lot of watches struggle so we see some of the tracks going through buildings right here and also deviating a bit from the actual route so if you're just looking to track your general route be it during cycling or maybe during running I think you're getting a pretty decent result with the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic there will be some deviation and some noise so the exact distance you ran or cycle might deviate a bit so it really depends on your purpose and looking at the rest of these rides this sort of confirms the result and for one of the rides here I actually briefly stopped at McDonald's to get a burger and as you can see there is some deviation here so when I went into the building it had some trouble keeping a lock on my signal but as I got out again you can see it reacquired a more accurate signal and then overall the tracking is not that bad but as you can see here again there is some deviation so be aware of that. So the location, or in other words, GPS tracking of the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic is not the best I've ever seen, but it's also not bad. It might be good enough for many people that just roughly want to track their route. Therefore, I would give the GPS tracking of the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic 3.5 out of 5 stars. Now, I'll share my overall thoughts on this watch in a second, but first it's important to discuss some of the limitations in my testing. 
First of all, I just tested the Galaxy Watch on me and it might perform differently on you. I think that the most important features that might influence the performance are likely your skin tone, your gender, and potentially also how hairy your arm is and if you have any tattoos on the spot where the watch sits. I do think that many of my results will be similar to how the watch performs on other people, but just be aware that there might be some differences. Also, I only tested the watch for a limited number of days and more testing and future updates might change the results as well. And finally, you might also have noticed I didn't show the normal Galaxy Watch 6 in my overview plots, even though I already did a preliminary test on this. That's because I'm also retesting this watch and I want to make the comparison fair by also providing more data for that particular watch. And that video should be online in a week or two. But okay, back to the main topic, the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic. What is my overall conclusion? Well, for health and sports tracking, it appears to be okay, though definitely not great. It does a decent job of tracking your heart rate, but only as long as the circumstances are in its favor. And the oxygen saturation measurements and GPS tracking appear to be good enough as well, that are also not amazing. The sleep stage tracking on the other hand doesn't appear to be that great and it seemed to generally measure too many awake moments and not enough deep sleep, at least on me. So overall, I'd give the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic 3 out of 5 stars. The main issue I have with this watch is that it doesn't seem to be an improvement over the last two generations of Galaxy Watches. So from a bang for buck perspective, I would be tempted to search for a sale on the Galaxy Watch 5 for instance, or even the Galaxy Watch 4 Classic, and in that case you might actually get more value for your dollar. The only thing I would be worried about in that case is that Samsung stops supporting the older generation watches sooner than the Galaxy Watch 6. So it's up to you to decide if that could be an issue. Now if you do decide to get a Galaxy Watch 5, a Galaxy Watch 6, a whoop strap, another device, or anything at all on Amazon for that matter, even something as small as toilet paper, and at the same time you want to support the channel, there are different affiliate and non-affiliate links in the description below that do not cost you any extra and some even provide a discount. Now given that you watch this video on the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic, you might also be interested in some more testing of the Galaxy Watches and those videos you can find right here. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching and catch you in the next video.